What is going on, everybody? Welcome back here to another installment of Honest and Uneducated, the show where we talk about everything from movies, movie news, video games, comic books. Speaking of video games, there was E3 today. Did, did, did any of you guys watch E3? I watched like a slight bit of it, and it wasn't very good. Like I did not. <laughs> like, they had this weird, like not to just like shit on something right out the gate here before I even get through the intro, but I was watching like a little bit of it, and I think it was called like, it was like a wholesome game segment, and like all the games seemed like, Dude, there was one that was really like an L.A. simulator. It was like the weird, like literally, like just like you're a person in L.A. and like they should be going to like a club and like it's just the weirdest thing. Twitter was called Twibber on it. I don't, I don't even know what it was called, but all the games were like, I don't know, they just weren't very good looking. And then, uh, but E three is like going on all weekend, and they got like a all the big companies are on like different days, which I I don't know if it's always been like that. But yeah, aren't aren't most of the major developers and systems aren't they going to be aren't they doing them like later in the week? Well, yeah, it seems like there was really no major uh, like developers or anything today, from what I remember. Um, but I only watched like the first like hour of it, and then I then I looked up the the schedule, and it seemed like you know I, these these dates aren't exactly right, but it was like a bunch of like little things, and then you know Sony. You know, and then that was like the only big one. Then on the next day, it was a bunch of things, and then Xbox, and then on the other day, it was Nintendo and a bunch of other little things. So, so like they each they, have their own, like, yeah, set. they separated yeah. it all out. Like, all the big, the big three have their like own days on there, which I don't remember them ever doing it that way, but maybe they have. And I'm just, it seems like it's been stretched out longer than normal because I think it's like yeah, a four I always, day event this year. Yeah, I always thought I, I thought the weekend like was like kind of almost like a preview to the actual event and mm-hmm. then the, you got into the nuts and bolts stuff on the week or like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. I don't know. I'm hoping there's some better stuff though than there was in this whole not the sh- I don't want to shit on the because I know these people put a lot of they're just I'm not the target demographic for these no. games. There was no big swords or guns, there's <laughs> no one being blown up. These were all like you know, happy fun go like you know, kid looking kind of fun games, and it's just, that's not what I'm trying to do. Like, sounds wholesome. It, it, I will give them that they were in the category of wholesome titles or whatever, and sure, I'll, I'll give them that. They sure they looked wholesome, but nevertheless, I was even thinking that if uh, it, there was like some weird like DMCA thing that with the people like streaming the E3 event, but I thought it'd be like cool if we did stream it. But then I saw all that, uh, like, DMCA issues, and I was like, well, that kind of throws that out the window, unfortunately, but that would be kind of Is it because they use, like, is it because they use, like, copyrighted music and stuff during it? Yeah, so it's like, if you didn't get, like, I think there was a way you could go and, like, become a partner with them, like, you could submit to, like, have, essentially just not get any DMCAs, but, like, you're allowed to stream it, supposedly, but you're just at the risk of whomever out there is going to DMCA your content. Right. Like if, yeah. if whether it's music or it's just the trailer and that the people who made that trailer don't want it, you know, being repurposed in that way. So it just seems like kind of a, well, it's a kind of a shitty thing for like full time streamers. Cause especially gaming ones, you know, cause it's like they would obviously want to sit there that. and stream yeah. the event and then sit there with their community and talk about it. But Mm -hmm. You know, at the risk of, you know, practically the entire thing being DMCA'd and your account being banned. It's like they have to sacrifice covering a gaming convention on their stream because they can't stream that day. Then if if they want to watch the event themselves, they can't. They can't can't, do that. They have to like the next day go and like just watch all the trailers. It's kind of just kind of shitty. Inconvenient. A little inconvenient, you know. And the DMCA is annoying with the music stuff anymore anyway. Oh, God, yeah. Like, it's like, come yeah. on, man. Like, I don't know how... It's a symbiotic relationship if someone's sitting there listening to your music. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no one's coming to, like, watch our show to listen to Linkin Park. No. You know what I mean? Like, if if we were streaming playing games and Linkin Park was on, or or whomever... All that's gonna do is give more exposure to the to the artists and like people in the chat or whatever who be like, "Well, who is this? This is a great exactly. song," and then they'll go and search it and find it and buy it themselves. Sure. Like, it hasn't, but hasn't hasn't music's always had a stick up their butt about stuff. Like yeah. music oh is God. like I, they're they're the industry that back in the day was like, you know, oh Napster's killing us, Napster's killing us, 
And they got rid of Napster. They spent all that time and money going after Napster, and everybody just moved somewhere else to LimeWire, you know, Kazaa. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And and now they're Fire they're Fire. they're at, they're at the point where they did what they had to do to compete, which is what they should have been focused on all along, which is dropping the price of music to something that's more reasonable—a ninety-nine cent buy for a song, and you know, making money up in live shows. And now I know that they're hurting because of the pandemic and everything, but. You know, they, they just always seem to really not instead of actually trying to be innovative and figure out ways to drive people to actually pay for their stuff, they just, you know, crap on everybody else and like try and ruin everybody else's thing. Just like, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I, I you know, as a, you know, I, I understand as creators, they, they deserve money and they deserve to be compensated. But I also think that there's, you know, a, quite a bit of difference between you using a 10 second or even a minute clip of, of a song to create a cool intro versus, you know, you asking people to pay 99 cents to watch you stream an entire album or something. You know, it's right. just there's a difference. That's a different animal. And they just yeah. don't seem to get that. The DMCA laws are just outdated and not fit for our current times man no. like in all yeah, it's, yeah. it's just is what it is because like it's exactly it pretty much just like you said like i was saying earlier like no one's coming like if i was listening to music no one's coming here to listen to that music that's just a byproduct of like the the community like yeah. and all it would do is give exposure to the the actual artist like right, right. It, it, it's just exactly it would like I can't I can't remember how many songs back before Twitch, you know, got all wrapped up with them and stuff. I can't remember how many songs I'd like never would have heard of if I hadn't been watching a streamer who just was playing like music they like. I'd hear something I'd be like, oh, that's sweet. Where it's at. And I'd go check out the band and like, you know, get their album or whatever. And like, yeah, it was a way to find new music. But yeah, it's, it's essentially like free marketing. In all really honesty. Is. Like definitely, definitely. Like what what do they think the radio was doing for the past, you know, yeah. 80 years? Do they think yeah, the radio station is a across the country were like you, you we're charging you and we're going to pay these artists for their music no that was yeah it be, would be different if like someone was like no big time streamer is profiting off the music that they're playing they're like they've already built their community yeah. and the music's just playing it's just supplementing yeah, yeah it's, mm -hmm. it's just it's it's dumb but like to well, that and like point, you said what were you saying even small streamers even small streamers they're not driving content to their thing oh, yeah. because of the music they're playing. Right. Exactly. You can apparently buy like, cause you brought up radios not to go on this tangent about DMCA right off the bat, but there's apparently this like commercial license that like you can buy, but it's like a hundred some on thousand dollars. And then you can like play licensed material on your, Oh, thing. is that it? Yeah. Some. It's like hundred thousand. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Cheap. You guys yeah, want to like throw in? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> like, like, uh, it's, a, it's a bit outrageous, but nevertheless, let's get to the topics at hand here. But first, obviously, this is we're kicking off season two of H and U, and now all that Ooh. really means is nothing super crazy or exciting. But we didn't even talk about this two weeks ago because we just we took a week off here, not because of season two or anything, really, just by virtue of real life issues. Um, nothing bad, just couldn't do anything. But we hit. Well, last week it was our 52nd show. We do a weekly show. So that was officially one year's worth of shows. So yep. we're just cataloging each year as a season. If, if you wanted to know if we ever brought up season two of H&U and what that meant, that's really it. It's just each year. So from now on, it's going to be this is the kickoff of season two of H&U, which has a nice little ring to it. It does. But so, yeah, we're here. We're back in black other than... Uh, John didn't get that memo here. We're, we're, I'm but. colorblind. Can I say I'm colorblind? <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. No, we did kind of, it was happenstance that Rick came over here in the studio and we were both wearing these black shirts and we are just like, we could just call it Back in Black Season 2. Right. H and U, Back in Black. <laughs> back in Black. Yeah, but Baby. nevertheless, and then I'm probably, which you would have already seen, if I do get to it, I'm probably going to change the, uh, the color of the intro to black just to suit that. You know, switch it up, spice it up. It's these dull ass colors. It was gray for a year, and now it'll be black for a year. Right. right. <laughs> but nevertheless, it's ba it's good to be back either way. Like I said, we took a week off, so we're here. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. Unfortunately, with Loki being on Wednesdays now, we're gonna have to figure something out for our like weekly reviews because by the time we talk about it on the show, like we normally would, that comes up on Monday. 
But then two days later, the new episode of Loki's out. So no, no one's going to care about it at that point. So we're going to have to do like a special, you know, just Wednesday or Thursday review and try to get it up and talk about it when it's a little bit more relevant. But we're going to talk about Loki nevertheless, because I want to, damn it, it's a good show. And then Bad Batch, and we got some Warner Brothers and Dis Warner Bros. Discovery news, rather. There's a couple of little things, but then like to kind of kick off season two here, we are going to go through and give our top five for our like most anticipated just things in entertainment for the, the remainder of 2021. So I kind of made a list of particularly just movies. John has a couple of other things in there. I think, Rick, you, you focused on movies, too, right? Yeah, but I've got some shows, too. I mean, yeah. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that, do the, uh, that top five. There's going to be I got quite a few honorable mentions, though, as well. I actually, as far as movies go, I was, I was quite surprised to see that there's there's actually 16 coming out just in 2021 from now until 2021. That I do want to see, which I was kind of shocked. 2022. Mm -hmm. You said now until 2021. Yeah, to the like until oh, the, the end, end of 2021. 2021. Yeah, it. yeah. It's like 20. If I were to include 2022, it'd be a whole other beast. But we'll do a most anticipated 2022 though at the end of the year. But True. nevertheless. Do not forget, guys, we're going to get into these topics, but don't forget first, you can submit topics and questions to the show by emailing us at honestandoneducated at gmail.com. That's honestandoneducated at gmail.com. And then usually we have our uh, our figure reviews and everything. They go up every Wednesday. Now, the last one I did was, again, like two weeks ago at this point, but it was the Heavy Infantry Mandalorian, which is a super cool figure. He's actually still sitting here down beside me as well. I'm going to pull him up. He's right here. Got this boy right here. He's just still flying. He's flying right now. Doing his thing. Yeah. Doing his thing. He's Saluting. giving me all the salute. So we did that. That's up on the channel right now. Those normally go up every Wednesday. And then again, every Friday, we do our live streams, usually. Sans this past week and uh, everything. But we'll be getting back into the regular schedule in time, like from now on. So we are all good on that front. So let's get into this first topic. And the first one we're going to talk about is there's uh, been a little bit of like, I don't know, a lot of questions ever since AT&T sold off Warner Brothers and then they, you know, Discovery ended up buying them. So now they announced it's going to be Warner Bros. Discovery, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, was one of the names I kind of throw out there that they could possibly do. It's not as good as what I wanted it to be, which was Discovery Bros., Hmm. Because that's just uh, this is good. Rick, did you throw that out? Like, I think we did. Yeah, I think you may have just like when we were talking about it, you spit that out. I was just like, that's Discovery the name. Bros. Like, Discovery yeah. Bros. is the name, but unfortunately, it's not the name. But nevertheless, there's an article that came out about just kind of what their actual plans are going to be going forward. Um, so this is a huge like article. There's a couple things that I'm going to kind of focus on in it, but this was in the LA Times. John, did you go through and actually read through a lot of this article? Or did you yeah, just kind of skim through I, it? I think I read through most. I, I, I think I, I sent it earlier in the week, so I've kind of forgotten where I... But yeah, I think I read through all of it. Yeah, because there's a, they go on and they talk about kind of just what this, you know, their new plans going forward essentially are going to be. And a lot of it's about like the movies because we know Warner Brothers announced, you know, during the pandemic and everything for this whole year, they're going day and date with the movie. So they address that and what their kind of plans are going forward. Then not too long ago, they also announced like when they first, I think they first announced this when they first started talking about HBO max. But um, I think it was Walter Amato who said that they were trying to make like five. What was it was the DC Walter Amato say they were trying to make like 10 movies a year. And then five would be I for think, HBO max well, and five for theaters. I I thought he said something like ten prop or uh, ten projects a year, not necessarily movies. Like yeah, that right, was a right, combination right. of, of, of yeah. But but like yeah, three three to four movies I think, and then um, I just got the impression like a movie every quarter, and then also a you know shows and and series to or direct to streaming movies as well. Right. So and they they, they, they they filled out the yeah they filled out the other half of that. And they, yeah, they go through and they address that like down in here too. They, they have like a weird thing here. They say like roughly 20 movies that uh, Warner Brothers usually makes. They're going to put like 10 to 12 on HBO Max and the other 10 to 12 on 
uh, in just a normal theatrical run. If you can do math, they're kind of talking about 24. So I don't know. I don't know why they said roughly 20 and not just half. You know, if you're going to say roughly 20, there's just, just, just say you're going to do half on HBO Max and half on right. theatrical. I don't know why they wrote it that way, but talk about that. And then we, there were rumblings way back in the day here, it seems at this point. But back in the day, Joss Whedon was developing a Batgirl movie, and that kind of got canned. Chris McKay was developing a Nightwing movie, and then that got canned. But then they came back just here recently and announced that they are going to be proceeding with that not the Joss Whedon Batgirl, from what we know, but they might be using that script. But Batgirl's back on the table. But then they also announced recently that they're going to be doing a Blue Beetle movie. But they had they didn't really announce whether it was going to be on Disney Plus or not Disney Plus, but HBO Max or in theaters. But this article goes and kind of goes on to say that Batgirl and Blue Beetle are at least for now aimed at HBO Max releases as That's opposed to theatrical releases, which. I only find that kind of odd for the Blue Beetle. I think Batgirl would be like good for that budgetarily because in the article they say that anything on the HBO Max side of things, they're only looking to spend like sub sixty five million on. But Blue Beetle being as CG heavy as it would presumably be, because his suit's pretty much like a Tony Stark nanotech Iron Man suit, it could be done for sixty five, but it's just gonna be a much well, it's set it's up there. It's smaller. a mid-budget movie for Batgirl and Blue Beetle. So, yeah, it's not like a big, big budget or anything like that. But they could pull it off if they really tried, I feel like. It's possible, but I just feel like with Blue... I think it'd be fine for Batgirl. Yeah, She's a boots-on-the-ground character. You may, yeah, you may sacrifice quality in terms of, like, the CG and all that sort of stuff when it comes to... Well, you uh, could do the CG good for the one character, like Blue Beetle himself. Yeah. My concern would be how small the world would end up feeling. Because the, the, the Jaime Reyes Blue Beetle character is like a galactic character as, right. as far as the lore goes. Like there's other beetles out in, in the universe. There's, you know, Red Beetle and there's Green Beetle. A lot and of aliens and like the Beatles. It's true. <laughs> but it, it's if you're going to make it for 65 million, it, it just in my mind, it makes it feel like it's going to inevitably feel like a smaller kind of movie when it has the potential of being this really big something like thing. Guardians of the Galaxy sized. Like. Yes. Like, but well, and that work. But and that's the thing that really like I, with both of these films, like what is DC doing? Are these standalone things that are only going to exist in their own world? And if so, then what's the goal of Blue Beetle? Is it just to tell a good, like, one-off story with this character and then not revisit it if the if the movie does really well and, like, their streaming numbers for it are huge? Um, because I imagine, like you said, at a budget of $65 million, you're going to have a story of a young kid who finds this magical for lack of, I mean, this tech is technologically advanced, this alien artifact um, that gives him superpowers and find him a coming of age story. Kind of, you know, it's, it's, it's the Spider-Man story, but you know, different tech, different Shazam. Um, right. Shazam. Yeah. It's, it's different tech, different powers, uh, a, you know, different setting, um, but it's essentially that coming of age story. And so you're going to, you're going to have this small story. And so most of it's going to be him dealing with this. And then you're going to have, one, two, maybe if you push the budget, three big action pieces throughout the movie. You know, one when he first finds it, maybe a training type session where he's using it, and then a big fight at the end. Maybe maybe there's a small little interlude when he's learning to use it where he stops some small crimes or something, and then a big battle at the end. But it's all going to take place on Earth within his community, within his setting, and then maybe you start to expand the mythos in a sequel, or you expand the mythos in whatever other projects DC is going to tie into these, if DC is going to tie projects into these. But if these are all, and th that's the same with like Batgirl, are they going to, this Batgirl movie that comes out, is it going, are they going to try and tie it to the Matt Reeves universe at all? Is it going to just be a completely standalone Batgirl universe? And And if so, like, how are they going to, present that to the audience and, 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 you know, make sure the audience is 
understands that these things stand separately from, I mean, and maybe that's Flashpoint. Maybe Flashpoint next year is going to be the, because they, they sure seem to be banking on the multiverse concept with Flashpoint. And so maybe that they're expecting that to just be through the roof successful and everybody will understand that these things are just their own things for the time being. I don't know. Yeah. And they also have like, I like their idea of doing multiverse and in, in a way, because I mean, Joker proved they can do it. They can make these one-off movies that don't connect anything and make a billion dollars. So like it's, and just with the, especially for DC, the way they managed or mismanaged the DCEU as it is, they don't really have any other choice. No, <laughs> like, no they, they have to throw in this multiverse thing at this point. Just, it, it, and it's going to feel weird because we got like, they got this like black Superman movie in development. We don't know if Henry Cavill's ever going to come back. I don't know why, but we're at that point. We know Ben Affleck's apparently only coming back to be in the flash movie, but then we also know that there's going to be a wonder woman three. There's going to be an Aquaman two. And these characters are in the Flash. These all these characters exist in that Snyder verse, but they can't really go on. With not it, right? because that Snyder verse is not a thing anymore. Yeah. No, so yeah, it's man. like yeah. a very weird predicament that they've put themselves in because of all this. So it's like, like I mean, Wonder Woman more so than like Aquaman, but Aquaman did it too. Were very self-contained. Like Wonder Woman did it by just being decades before so then sure. aquaman made one reference to steppenwolf like offhand from mara and that was the only connection it had so i mean they've kind of been doing it already but it's just this like weird amalgamation that's gonna end up happening and i i, I don't know like again they just kind of have no other choice i think they can make it work but it is gonna be weird for them to have like this robert pattinson batman but then they're going to make a Batgirl movie that has nothing to do with. Yeah. Is it going to be in Ben Affleck's Batman Batgirl or be in any of them? Like. Oh, just, yeah. Just no, just some random. You never see Batman kind of like Titans. Like he's there and Jor Mormont plays him, but he, he's just kind of a side character or he doesn't really show up at yeah. all. Or are they going to have sex on the roof? Hmm. Like who knows? We <laughs> like, can only hope. Yeah. And it is what it is. You know, probably not, considering everybody hated that when it happened. <laughs> but <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm excited to see where they go with it. I just find it the picking and choosing of what is going to be a streaming movie for them. I don't know if I agree with it. Like Blue Beetle, I know it's a, a the smarter bet would to make be, like to make a low budget version of it or a lower budget version of it. But that character is not really the Ted Core Blue Beetle would have worked for a lower budget one, but the Jaime Ray is one I don't really think would work for it. Like Shazam, which is a very like you kind of mentioned with like you know Spider Man and Shazam is going to be a very similar kind of coming of age kind of story. Both of those movies were more than sixty five million dollars. Like yeah. Shazam was yep. a pretty small self contained movie for hundred. Realistically, million? didn't have a whole lot of special effects, and it was a hundred million dollar movie. Like yeah, Blue all Beetle all the sin, more. all the all the sins though were special effects in that. Like like I I imagine you don't you're not gonna you're not going to you might get a quick like narrative, especially if the if the scarab talks to Jaime, you may get like a quick narrative recap of where the scarab comes from, but you're not going to get like a flashback scene of this scarab being developed or the alien race that it comes from or anything like that the you're, other beetles i'm guess exactly you're you're probably good there that would all be I, i'm guessing this is like testing the waters and like if if this however they determine success if this is successful then maybe you get the bump to the hundred million dollar big production for the sequel mm -hmm. where they expand it out and do you know the other beetles or they do some sort of intergalactic conflict thing that he gets involved in yeah and that is what they said their their plan was to like test like these lesser known characters on hbo max lower budget if it's successful mm. maybe make a bigger budget one and put it in theaters after that yeah i just don't agree with that one i feel like they'd be better it. off introducing him in another movie so then they can just make a bigger budget movie. i just don't see that story with jaime 
working out all that well because you can't do that stuff, which is like essentially core to the story. Like they're gonna have to do like you know if it, the movies are different than the comics, yes. Like, but I don't know. It's just it's just weird. It's like imagine trying to do Iron Man for sixty five million dollars. It just wouldn't work. Like it'd be kind of hard to do it. I mean, you could make it work, but yeah. you could make it work, but at what cost? You know, like at what cost? It's like Green Lantern. Like you can't. It's the same concept. Like you try to make a sixty five million Green Lantern movie. I don't know if you can do. It's just gonna feel smaller. And, and you know, and it could. And it's like it has all this potential. And if you can't really do it because of the budget, it just becomes kind of a problem. That's my only fear. Yeah. Like with with anything that they're putting on HBO Max, you know, it's like because they're they're trying to make things on the cheap, and then even if it's good, you, you you have to hope it's amazing and gets good reception. Because if it's not, then like maybe they'll do another one, but they'll keep it low budget, so you'll never get that big. That's why, honestly, too, speaking of Green Lantern, the fact that they're doing that as a series on HBO Max boggles my mind. Like, I've been worried. Yeah, how about much money are they gonna? How much money are they gonna put into that? You know, how, well, yeah. what what's the episode cost for that? You know, you got Lord of the Rings coming out on Amazon, and they're spending just insane money on a ultimately kind of re- like swords and sorcery. Like, I know the sorcery aspect of it will will take some doing uh, CGI wise, but you know the the, the swords and you know horses and the, the medieval type kind of aspect that's all practical stuff that isn't that you wouldn't think would be as cost prohibitive um so whatever they're spending the money on is like huge and like green lantern is all CGI like the, I don't know how you get away from anything CGI with Green Lantern and the I can't imagine their production budget is going to be anywhere close to what Amazon's spending on Lord of the Rings. Yeah. And there, there's no way it would. there's no way they have that much faith in it. And they're and they're doing a Green Lantern core. They're not just doing like Green Lantern like Guy Gardner yeah, on that's... Earth and doing a this is supposed to be like a Green Lantern core movie with which means multiple lanterns, which means multiple alien species, which means even more CGI in addition to just the Green Lantern co- constructs and costumes and whatnot. So yeah, it's yeah, the, that's baffling. The constructs themselves, I mean, that's a huge undertaking CGI wise. But yeah. like you said, having extra species and all that sort of stuff, that really kind of makes you think like get get expensive. I mean, I I mean, all you know. Yeah. You're talking about doing the Mandalorian with adding in CGI effects for the constructs, basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And it's good. It's got. See, it's got to be big feeling, you know. Like Mandalorian it, yeah, can do exactly. that, and, but like, they, they're gonna it's, need to make a volume. <laughs> the the produ- the production quality's gotta gotta at least match what Mandalorian does. I 100%. mean, that's that at bare minimum. It's gotta match what they do, and maybe even more so because they don't have the prestige of the star wars name attached to it they're going to live or die by how well the effects come out and how well people you know, the story obviously is a huge part of that too but it's also got to look just as good too yeah and that, like that again that is my only concern with anything that they're doing because marvel is not doing that with their shows marvel is treating that kevin feige has stated that their their disney plus programming is having the same amount of production value equality and love as a big movie would Right. And you can see that watching any of the series that have came out. They are all feature film quality. Like and HBO yeah. is they and Warner has admitted that they're they're absolutely not doing that. <laughs> they're they're gonna make these lesser known characters at a lower cost. And I'm just worried that it could it could definitely be done. But given you know eight Warner's and DC's track records, I definitely am a little bit skeptical. But I'm just worried it's inevitably gonna k- kind of kick them in the ass because like if you put more money into it to make it as good as possible, you don't have to spend 200 million on everything. But know which well, one can you know Batgirl could serve for a lower budget, Blue Beetle, uh, Green Lantern. Uh, hey. You're gonna be skimping on your quality at that point. That's a, we're making it too small, and it just worries me a little bit. Yeah, true. But we'll just have to wait and see. But this is, like I said, this is a huge article that came out on the uh, LA Times. It, it talks obviously more about the Batgirl stuff and everything, but that's just the stuff that like I kind of want to focus on. Uh, but it kind of it, it goes through and kind of gives, uh, like I said, their plans about what they're going to do going forward after this merger. So if you want to go look at it, it's out there. Go search that and go find it. But question is, though, it does. 
Uh, sorry, it, it does mention that there are five DC movies coming out next year. And I knew that there were mm-hmm. a lot coming. I didn't realize that there were five next year. Yeah. And that's I, now one of them is the DC Super Pet animated movie. So take that for what it's worth. Um, I'm super excited about it, but I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but there are four other live action ones. So I want to see if they it, when that movie comes out, if they spend more on that movie, which, you know, they probably had to for The Rock and to John get the Brzezinski voice acting. and Kevin exactly. Hart, like all these people, like they're spending more on that than Batgirl and Blue Beetle, probably. I mean, oh, I didn't think about that, but yeah, you, yeah, you're probably right. It does That's have though being an animated family kind of movie with a very known property, and you know, as the DC world, it has the potential of making a ton of money if it's good. So, I mean, I can cut them a little bit of slack for doing it, but it's still like, I don't know. I, I feel like in the end, making a big budget Super Pets movie is just as risky, if not more risky, than bumping the budget on like Blue Beetle or something. Right. <laughs> like, right. I don't know. Because, like, there's a, there's a, most animated stuff does not make a billion dollars. Like, only Disney and Pixar yeah. does that. No one else does that. Right. They make good money, but not, not billion dollars kind of no. money. So. I'm curious. I'm, I'm, I am curious about the Super Pets movie, but. It also, the article did also, I just wanted to point out, it said that the, their whole day and date thing with the movies going to HBO Max and um, box office has bumped their subscriptions, you know, time wise. They had 38 million subscribers in September of last year, and they claim to be up to 44.2 mm-hmm. now. So you yeah. see about a 6 million, 6.2 million jump um, in subscribers based off of that, which is, what is that, about 90 million in revenue? Um, that's 90 million a month in revenue. So, you know, over... Over six or seven months, you're you're looking at you know you're getting close to a billion dollars there, and then you add in the box office receipts for what little these movies are making at the box office, and you start to you start to see that maybe it wasn't the worst, you know. Besides, if, as long as they can repair those relationships, uh, yeah, with the actors sure. and directors, that maybe it may end up actually having working out for them. It's still crazy to think that. Uh... At least to me, the HBO is like struggling to get subscribers because they got like great content, content, dude. Like sure. all their shows are amazing. Like that Mayor of East Wood, I think it was Eastwood, Mayor of Eastwood. East show. Town. There's the East Town. I think it was, it was Town, one I of think. the two. It's either Eastwood or East People Town. People love it. It's yeah. amazing. I watched it. Like it was fantastic. Oh, did you? I haven't oh, seen it so yet. Good. It's supposed yeah, to be amazing. Yeah. yeah. But they have like they they always have shows of that quality though, and it's like so it, mm. it it's just HBO is worth it enough just for the shows. Like Game of Thrones, man, like there you go. It was mm. like you know it's The Sopranos, all these things. Like there's like the fact that somehow HBO isn't as popular. It's like granted, yeah, like Disney Plus is like 103 million subscribers right now. It is half the price of HBO. That's true. So. It's got that going for it, but Disney also has Disney, Star Wars, and Marvel attached to it. So, right, it's, yeah, it's, like, I get why they're huge, but it, it is kind of crazy to me that HBO is like struggling to get subs with everything they actually have. Like, when you sit down and look at it, like, they have amazing yeah. content. Yeah. I agree. I, I think I think it's crazy too. I just, I also just don't think you can underestimate the, the, just this kind of sticker shock or just the perceived value or the perceived worth of, of the streaming service. Like when Disney's coming out and releasing their service for six ninety nine a month, when they jump, when they, when they first start out and you're getting Disney, you're getting all the star Wars, all the Marvel, all the Disney stuff. And then you get HBO, which admittedly is great for older people, but you know, they don't have the, the, the family draw of, of the Disney animated library. Um, they don't have the big, the recent big budget superhero success of the Marvel universe and the re- return of star Wars, what four or five. Well, I mean, we're six, seven, eight years ago now. Um, you know, they did, they don't have any of those big names to hang their hat on besides, like you said, their original program, which is mm-hmm. phenomenal and worth it, but their price is over twice what Disney was like. I, I, I think Disney and Netflix showed 
you start out small, you get people hooked, <laughs> you give them the first taste free, or, you, or at least for a very reasonable amount, and then you slowly start climbing the price on them, and they'll they'll just accept it along the way. And and HBO just didn't do that for some reason. Yeah. And I, I know why it would have been a better idea. It would. HBO didn't. HBO didn't do that because they had a price point already set for the HBO service without HBO Max. You know, before HBO Max came out, if you wanted HBO streaming, HBO Go. Um, you had to pay 15 bucks a month or you had to have a cable provider and get their HBO now service, which was also, you know, 15 to 20 bucks a month. So they already had that internal perceived price point in their head and they just couldn't get it. You know, they couldn't get around their, couldn't get out of their own way to, 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 to to compete. They they could have done something to where like, uh, they still can do this by the way, but if they really wanted to, they could do like, if you sign up now you get an introductory $7 a month price for yeah, a like year. a special rate. Like, Bundle that shit. Put it together and like, like and do like 6 months. It's normally, you know, 15 it's 15 bucks a month, so 6 months is what? 30, 60, 90 bucks. So, instead of 90 bucks, you get it for half price. You get it you do 6 months and you get it for 50 or something like that. Right. Like bundle that together and get just get people in the door and maybe once discovery happens maybe they'll bundle discovery with hbo max and give you like a low 9.99 a month for the first year price or something before they expand it out or something i don't know but yeah i mean they could do that when they do the merger thing and they if they do add the discovery content you know with hgtv and all that stuff which is definitely what they need to do they want to bump their stuff up make a new package where it has everything right like because they they still need to keep discovery as its own separate thing because it has like a very large subscriber count for what it is they don't want to alienate those viewers by any means but they definitely need to make a a big bundle rename it like warner plus or something or warner discovery plus and to say like it's hbo max and it's discovery all in one and then you know introductory pricing for eight bucks or whatever and like and just fine print that shit to say you know it's gonna go up to 15 later though. <laughs> like, right, right. Like, but it'll work like it'll 100 like i would sign up for it i already pay for it for 15 anyway so i wouldn't be hurting so i don't really care but yeah they they really missed the market and like you said for 100 they could i don't know what they could have done since like hbo already cost 15 bucks it's like now we have this bigger new service. Like it's an it's a right? new service. You don't even you, first of all you don't you you do what you've always said and don't call it HBO. One hundred percent exactly. If they would call it Warner, Warner Bros. Yeah, Warner Plus and bring it out for seven ninety nine or whatever. And and there you you know you don't even tie the perceived. Yeah, you get the HBO stuff there, but that only the people that have HBO really know that. Yeah, that that yeah, right. they, that, that would have been the only way they could have got around it. Because then yeah. it's just like. Every, okay, because it, it, you have the people who complain like I'm paying this for HBO though. Like it's just like well, cancel it and get H, get the exactly. Warner Plus. Like that's all you do, man. Duh. Like, like, yeah, duh. like it's it's common sense. So that would have definitely yeah, if they would have done that, I don't. We wouldn't be having these conversations. We would have lost a lot of content if they would have done that. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've talked about that for like God ever since it came out. It's been a problem. Jesus, right. at least it's not as bad as the name of Peacock. I'll, I'll still give them. That. We're not leaving it. We're not leaving it in season one. We're bringing it to season two. Yeah, well. dude, I'm sure it'll come to season three of this. Right. <laughs> we'll definitely see. So, but yes, the question is though, guys, have you seen this article? What are your thoughts on, you know, are, are you looking forward to this merger? Like, I think it's a, a good thing. Inevitably. I really do hope that they, like I, I think HBO Max itself is like probably like overall one. It's it's definitely top three of the streaming services, like hundred percent. And like in my opinion, you got to have Disney Plus, Netflix, and HBO Max. I mean, everything else is just like secondary, in my opinion. Because as far as original content and then library programming goes, they have the most between those three and the best, in my opinion. All subjective though. But what are your thoughts on this? Are you worried about the their DC movies like I, like I was talking about earlier? The the way they're budgeting some of this content out it has me worried that they're gonna kind of you know because they're focusing on the money instead of the the content itself that it may not be as good as it could be. I don't know. I'm worried about that. Like I said, so let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. <music>